Hello. Good morning, everyone. We are live. Had a little technical difficulties when we first got on, but that is okay. Talk about doing lives. My name is Katie Alm. I'm an artistic educator for the color company Joico. I'm coming to you this morning from the, the Hair Games YouTube channel, which I love them. I love all things Salon Republic. So thank you for allowing me to be here today, throwing things off the camera. Story of my life, right? But good morning. This morning, I'm here to talk to you all about our trend, new trend, new trend. There's no such thing as new trends, right? I feel like if you're on TikTok, you'll understand that um, trends just come and go like nonstop nowadays. And what stayed along for like more than a year was that really bright, bold color blocking, you know, the blonde in the front, the dark in the back or whatever the combination was. And I feel like we're going to see a new trend of, I don't know, softer, still brighter colors, but lived in back to that kind of summer look. I am from Southern California. I'm coming to you live from Diamond Bar, California, born and raised here. And I am a true to my heart, California girl. And um, I love all things lived in hair color. Most of my girls that get their hair done by me are now either super blonde because that was the trend or they like to get their hair done three times a year. And when balayage became a super hot trend like eight to 10 years ago, I feel like I learned it, I got great at it. And then the trend started to switch over to, they want really dark and bright, I'm sorry, really dark base with really light ends. And balayage wasn't really the, I don't know, how to achieve that look. We started just doing back-to-back -back highlights and kind of going back into a super blonde, right? All these trends keep going back and forth. So. When I wanted to think about, like, I don't know, doing a new life, I thought, what do I want to see come back? What kind of trend do I want to do in my own chair? Maybe not necessarily a trend that's super trendy on TikTok, but you know, lo and behold, you start Googling uh, some fall trends and foliage comes up and it literally said from 2018. And I said, I'm bringing it back. We're bringing it back. I go on TikTok, start typing in foliage and different trends and, you know, it's so funny to see they're they're going to call it different things. Sombre, lived in California hair, or just going to call it what it is. Um, I don't want to get my hair done often, you know? So luckily, uh, Joyco relaunched their balayage lightener, and it's a perfect opportunity to show you how I use this. This is my uh, side doll head. I used her just to do a little before. Um, I'm sorry, this is uh, half of the doll head done already. I'm going to show you how I use our Blonde Life Balayage Powder. Again, brand new. Fun fact, in sustainable packaging. Oh my goodness, this sun. Um, in sustainable packaging, all of this is 100% recyclable. The lid, even the scoop inside, is 100% recyclable paperboard. And that comes from 90% of post-consumer recycling, which is really fun. I love that. You know, we love to be sustainable. So today we're going to use that plus our brand new coconut developer. This is going to come in 40, 20, and 5 volume. Uh, it's just like our Luma Shine, but a little kick up. It is for our Blonde Life, which means it goes perfectly with all of our Blonde Life um, care and color system. Uh, but it does have coconut oil in it, which is going to help enhance our <clears throat> excuse me, smoothness, our hydration, and our shine. And everybody loves a good coconut oil moment, right? Especially here in California. So we're going to use two of those things today. I'm going to show you how I section my doll head, which is, or my client. Um, it's a lot of sectionings and you're gonna probably laugh at me. You think that's very crazy, but once we get the sectioning down, it's more about just putting the color in there and that's where you get to have your fun, your free play, you're enjoying it. And um, really just going back to like eight years ago when I really felt like an artist in the chair, you know, before it had to be about the pictures and the TikToks. It was more about just painting and doing hair for fun. So that's what we're gonna show you today. Here comes, I'm gonna do it on a doll head too, but here's my sectioning. Man, that she's got a lot of sections, right? There's a little full 360. Here's her done. We're gonna do it on a separate doll head together so I can show you how I achieved all of that and show you how really easy it is just to freehand balayage, turn your brain off and just paint away, giving you that really bright in the front bold. And then when you turn around, you don't see too many harsh lines. Because when you remember the balayage when it first came out, people were just like slapping 
bleach on there and it was giving these really harsh, harsh lines. We don't want to have any harsh lines. You can kind of see she's actually got a little bit of grace coming in here. Thank you. Shout out my friend Sam for this doll head. Um, but the goal is to get a lot of underpainting, no harsh lines on the top and a nice dark veil. It's going to be lived in. It's going to look like she just spent a little bit too much time in the sun uh, during the summertime. And as we know, balayage, it's only exposing a little bit of the warmth. You're only going to get seven plus levels of lift. But with this new balayage lightener, it is just like our free play lightener that we canceled a little, I don't know, two years ago. Cry. So sad. When they said they're going to do a new balayage lightener, but plus our blonde life ability, I was so excited because sometimes when you use free play, it would get the perfect, it was a perfect consistency and the perfect balayage, but it just wasn't light enough. So we added a little bit of blonde life powder in there and you're going to get that seven plus levels of lift um, for that really pretty California hair. So real quick, we're going to go over this. We're going to do two sections in the back. Lots of underhand painting right under here. This is going to be our dark veiled out section. You can kind of see that it goes across where just, just below the head, we're going to leave this section out as well. These are our two veils, top and bottom. In the front, we're going to do a really heavy, heavy, heavy balayage in the, um, in the bang area, fringe area, especially around the front. And as we go to these side back sections, we're going to just go a little bit lighter. I'm calling it the backwards check mark, where we're going to go really high and then just a little bit up in the back, giving them that really nice flowing ribbon look. On this very top section, we're just going to do a little tiny baby painting on the ends and again, leaving out this top, top section for that nice veil. I did prep my doll head already with our Pro Series 1 and 2. If you haven't used that before, it is our color optimizer and bond protecting. The cool thing about Blonde Life is that it has our Tamanui and Manolia oils in it already. So you really don't have to add in any extra additives. It comes with our arginine in there as well. But just for added protection, I did add some Defy Damage 1 and then I'll rinse with Defy Damage 2 as well. Let's get sectioning in one second. This is the only other doll head I had. Um, that didn't really have any color on it, so you can really see those sections. He does have a beard, so you know what? Maybe we will do another live and do a little balayage for the beard, but you know, everyone deserves some fun hair color, right? Let me lower this down real quick so you can get a better view. Also, if you have any questions, go ahead and please put them in the chat right now. I'll try my best to answer them as much as I can. If you have any other questions after the live is done, you can find me on Instagram at Katie Alm, K-A-T-I-E-E, -E, two E's, A-L-M, or on TikTok, which is Katie Alm, just with one E, because, you know, I made it difficult for everybody. So here is our section, or I'm sorry, here is our client. He's a cutie. Let me bring this as close as I can so you can see. Sorry if you can't see my body or see my face, but you get the gist, right? So depending on where your client parts their hair, we're going to pretend like everyone still wants a middle part. Even though on some trend hunting I've been doing, it seems like the side part's going to come back. So watch out, Gen Z. They were all having us for that uh, middle part. So watch us have a, a side part again. I don't, I'm not mad about a side part. I came from the, the scene kid days, so I love a good side part. But we're going to part them in the middle. Going from the occipital bone, that's a hard word for me to say, all the way to behind the ear. We're going to start our big first section. Flipping all this out of the way. I swear, this is what takes the longest. And then once we get these in, it's just going to be breezing by. I'm going to do it on the other side. From the occipital bone to right behind the ear. Right now we're sectioning out that veil. There we go. Make it a little nicer parts, Katie. Okay. Let's section this out of the way. 
The goal is to have little tiny highlights in this area, but not in any of this area. So when it falls down, you don't get those random stripes that hang into this dark veil area. So then we're going to do a diagonal from the ear to the center of the nape. It's always a little harder to do upside down, so bear with me. From the ear to the center of the nape, almost like a triangle on the bottom and a oval on the top. Just like that. Here is our first dark veil. Once we get the lightener in there, we will wait about 60 minutes for it to process all the way. And when we're doing that, obviously we can't do that on the live. It might take too long. So I'm going to slip this in half real quick, right in the middle, looking for a nice triangle section. I'm going to braid this down so it's easier to work with after the fact. Once we are done with the hour of processing, I'm going to rinse with our Defy Damage shampoo, and then I'm going to apply our brand new Lawn Life um, Demi Toners. These beautiful girls right here. This is also a new reboot. Get close to the camera if we can see. Comes in different seven different shades, including clear. It's mixed with our five volume coconut as well. One to one. That's going to be your toner. These were designed meant for mostly blondes, but as we know, you can be blonde without having to be platinum blonde. Uh, and they're going to help cut out any warmth, which balayage obviously brings out tons and tons of warmth. So we're just going to try to not cover it up all the way, but just mask some of that really deep reds that are come from this level, what is this, five, six-ish kind of thing. So here's that one section, two section, three section. Flip your client to the front. Flip, pick them up, whatever you gotta do. Now we're gonna section out this front area. I love working in a lot of triangles. I don't know why, it's always just been something that I've loved the 10 years of doing hair. So right in this apex, I'm going to section out another triangle from the corner of the eyebrow to the top of the head or top of the fringe area. Triangle. Clip that out of the way. We're gonna split that in the half when we get to that section. Now we have this huge, minus a beard, huge section of hair from right here behind the ear to this section right here. I'm gonna connect those dots. Here's one section. It's blending with the beard. <laughs> This is going to be our another triangle section where we're going to do tons of underpainting, hitting these big triangle points, these three points right there. One section. From this point to the middle point, almost like a pinwheel, right? Go all the way to the center part. Oopsies. Too much to the middle of that veil, right there. See, another triangle, pinwheel triangle. All right, last section. We're gonna repeat that same thing on the other side. So from this behind the ear 
to this front fringe section one big triangle. Like I said, all of the sections, but pretty much we're only going to be balayaging on a few of these sections. Okay, so same point to the middle. Sorry, I got to flip it a little bit. I can't see what I'm doing. The goal is to have a veil within itself, keeping that middle part of the hair nice and dark with ribbons of lightness on the ends and each part of the high part of the triangle. End up with this very large section up on top. That veil that we're looking for. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this corner and meet it into the middle section right there. Almost like a rectangle. Same on the other side. And that's going to be our biggest veil. Ensuring that we're not going to have any random high points floating at the top of the head. All of these will be also on my Instagram. If you want to reference back later. Because it is kind of a lot. Once we're done with all of those back sections, we're going to section this front fringe in half. And we're going to get mixing. So just right in half. We're going to do tons of underpainting in this front and only just tipping this little area giving it a fringe veil as well. And there's my 10,000 sections. Again, here it is on the better doll head. Here is our fringe section with the front little bang. Sorry, my fingers, but that's kind of gross. Um, here's our front section with our bangs. This is our, we're gonna tip this ends just for the veil. Super bright painting, medium painting, very ends only. Again, this is our veil up here, veil of darkness, and we're gonna do some underpainting in these underneath parts. All right. In the beginning, like I said, I already did this one side just so you're not gonna watch me paint for an hour, because it is kind of like watching paint dry, watching someone else paint. It is relaxing in a different way, but it's still kind of boring. So for this one, we're gonna start in the back. I'm gonna clip these three out. And like I said, we're gonna underpaint all of this back section. But first, I'm going to mix up my lightener. Aren't these both so cute? I love a good little matching moment, right? Let me put my gloves on. Rude. Put some gloves on, girls, because it is 40 volume. We are not trying to hurt ourselves, nor am I trying to get it in my little burn that I have on my finger. The oven got me over the weekend. Again, rude. Okay. 
get these out of the way. There we go. So I'm gonna mix our Blonde Life Balayage Powder. It does have the kaolin clay that Free Play did, plus our Blonde Life. So it is this lighter blue, it's kind of hard to see, lighter blue, but it is not white, but it's also not blue. So it will be easy to see which bowl is which when you're doing it, but I'm gonna do one, two, two probably, just depends on your consistency with 40 volume as well. Okay. Little pro tip, if you need to remix, remix. It's worth it, especially when you get to the front. You do not want to be the one that's light down here and not as light up in this front area. So here's our 40 volume with our coconut oil. Extra hydration. There we go. Another pro tip. Whatever brush you're mixing with, maybe don't apply with. So you don't want to get the um, product all over that and then all over the hair in a different way. So I'm just gonna slowly spin it together. You don't wanna aerate it too much. It is very similar, if not the same as Free Play. When you paint it on, it does put a cast. So no need for foils or film or cling wrap or unless you want to have the extra. But for me personally, Free Play or just freehand painting in general is going to be fun and it's kind of thoughtless, you know, just put the color in there where we want the color and not really having to apply. But it does put a cast around it, so it does remain moist. But if you do need to reapply, if you see that it is drying out on the ends, reapply if you need to. Just be careful. So you see, like, we don't want to go and put all of that right in the hair. So let's get some of that product off. And I'm going to use a balayage brush from Framar. Put this down. Here's my favorite Freemar balayage brush. Nice and flowy. That's what I like. As we're doing the underpainting, you should split this girl out. Um, make sure you're trying to keep your wrist as straight as you can and using your full arm to apply. Not putting too, too much pressure. That's a part about balayage that people get confused on is that you do want to saturate, but you want to build the product on top of the hair. You do not need to smush it in there. When you smush it in there, that's when you're going to get harsh lines, transfer, that kind of stuff. So it's all on the wrist, right? It's all on the wrist. Let me just break this out of the way so we're not getting any new product on our balayage we already did. Okay. Let's have her put her head down for us. Remember, we're doing some under balayaging. Take her braid out. You see how dark her hair is? Oh, you can't see. I think I do need a better, better camera, but... You can see the difference of the two tones. That's 40 minutes with toner. Um, that is after I'm done applying. So 40 minutes, I'm sorry, I process for an hour and then I put that on for 20 minutes, the toner. So here is our big triangle section. Let's see if I can put this in the better view. Actually, I'll need to be on the opposite end of it, duh, Katie. I'm going to have her kind of tilt her head to the side. I'm going to want to hold the hair very taut. I'm going to show you without any product on there. I keep my wrist nice and straight. And I'm just going to paint in there just like that. Balayage can be pretty messy. So be aware of that. Try not to get it on the other sections. And also, um, keep a towel close by, because you'll need it. That's for sure. Okay. Let's start. Woohoo! Holding tight. We're going to hit those three corners, like I said. One, two, three, being our highest highlight point. 
lots of underpainting in between and really heavy saturating those ends. I'm only putting about this much product on there. Some people like to put it on the back of their hand. I wipe my hands in between each section, so I won't be able to do that. All right. We don't want to put the product just in there, right? I just kind of start to tap in. What is that happy medicine? Just tap it in. Tap, tap, tap. Building up that product is going to be what gets you that higher point. Get some more product on there. This is the fun part too, right? We get to paint. There's always been something about bleach to me that I think makes my brain happy. Like wherever I put this lighter paint, it's going to be blonde. I don't know why. That just tickles my brain very nicely. Going through and balayaging, and I'm just kind of tapping in these. Blending. You want to go against the grain. You see how I'm going against the grain and with the grain, but when you're doing your blendy moment, you want to kind of go against the grain. And I don't mind all of these little hairs having a little bit of color on them, a little bit lightener on them, because it kind of gives it that natural strain out of the sun. I went swimming for too long this summer. We're going to hit that high point as well. Oops. There we go. Don't really want to leave any clumpiness, so I'm going to take my rat tail comb after we're done, and I'll show you how I break that up. Don't be afraid to move the hair around. I'm going to do this side now. Keep your wrist more straight. Obviously, for me, it's a little different right now because I am trying to get you on camera to see it. But when you flip the hair down on the other side, especially when you're doing under lights, you do not want to see any transfer. There's nothing there, right? You can take your rat tail comb. If there's any places that you feel like are bunched up, unbunch them. That's the fun part about this painting. There's really not a lot of rules, you know? We really want these mid to ends to be saturated, especially on the underneath part. When you pull your hair forward like I do, you want this part to be nice and light and bright. So you see how we have our little highlight here, highlight there. We're going to just follow those down lightly on the other side. But this section is all about underpainting using the top part as a low light. And then I'm going to tip these ends out, meaning I'm going to fully saturate these ends, try to make them as bright and as light as I possibly can, giving that that kind of ombre effect, right? Ombre balayage. And it's so fun how people just change the, the names of things. I'm just kidding. Ombre and balayage are two different things, but and if you're leaving your balayage like this, that is not saturated enough. This is a clay-based lightener, so you don't want to see any of the brown in between. You want that to be packed in there. All right. One more check underneath here. Make sure it's all nice and saturated. Isn't that so fun? Ah, I missed I miss freehand painting so much. It totally went away for a few years, and I am so happy to see the resurgence of it. Okay, and we're just going to lightly drape that down and move to the next section. Like I said, I wipe my hands off in between each one. You don't want to get the 40 volume on your client or on her skin or, or on your skin either. It doesn't feel very nice, right? All right. Let's clip, unclip these three. Remember, we're doing brighter in the front, medium, and then this is going to be just mostly just the ends. So we want to be super, super highlighted in this front area. 
kind of like I said earlier, it is a backward check mark. So here's the high point, and then you're going to check up just these ends, just a tiny bit. And we'll move to the front fringe. Oops, practice what you preach, Katie. Don't get the color on any of the, va the veils. Okay. Now on the front, we're going to do some underpainting as well. Hitting those three main points. One, two, three. But I am going to do a little bit of front painting just in this one little ribbon area to give it some nice lighter. Again, we're not straying away from that brighter in the front. We're just softening it up a little bit. We're not trying to get rid of it all the way. Because I do like that little brighter in the front. And naturally, the hair would do that. So, Also, as you notice, I'm not teasing the hair because this is very natural, fluid painting. I do not want to tease the hair because I don't want to untease it after the fact. And um, sometimes you're creating more problems than you're doing helping. So here it is, our high points. One, two, three. I'm going to start in the middle, please. Start in that middle area and fully saturate all the way up. Again, this is mixed one to two. But if you want it to go a little bit faster, you can do one to one. That is totally okay. I do want this to be highlighted in here, so I'm going to surface paint, but I'm really going to get in these big highlights. Anybody else miss freehand lightning like I did? Oopsies, Katie. Don't put it on your client. We were like, no, we didn't miss it for that exact reason. No, I'm just kidding. This spot. When I mean surface painting, I mean I'm just going to slightly brush it on there. Just going to lift it out a tiny, tiny bit without leaving any harsh lines behind. That's the goal, right? No harsh lines. You see that I got that little dot right there. If you leave it, it's gonna it's gonna live like that. It will it will leave a line. So make sure you're blending as nicely as you can. Nicely, nicely as you can, as nice as you can. <laughs> nice and saturated in that highlight, top and bottom. Showing you the other side is that there's nothing on that side. Let's hit this back corner area. Definitely fun, fun to paint, fun to watch. Did anyone else miss freehand painting like I did? Definitely was one of my more favorite things to do, so. I'm just going to connect these little middle from those two highlights from one point to another point. You see, haven't I haven't let go of the hair since I started this section. I'm going to try our hardest to hang on to it because the more you put it down, the more ripples you're going to cause in the hair. And that could create a line, so... Even once I take the fine tooth comb and I comb it out a little bit, I still like to go in one more time and just kind of smooth out any of those little dots I just created. You're definitely going to want to need some room if you have it. Because I am booty bumping over here. But that's that salon sweet life, right? We love it. I'm going to tip these ends out. Again, you want it to be fully saturated. That's not saturated enough. You almost do not want to see the brown through. Obviously, the darker the hair, you're going to see it a little bit more. But these ends need to be fully saturated. And then I'm just going to drop. Drop it on down. Again, 
and not trying to get it on the client's face. This is the only time really where I would maybe put a foil because you don't need the foil to lighten the hair to get it any, any different um, levels, but you could use it as a barrier just from her and the skin so we're not hurting our clients, right? Okay, second section. Unbraid this. This is mostly going to be two big highlights for the next two sections. We're going to go one highlight here all the way down and probably starting about midway and going that way. That's backwards check mark. Check. No, turn your check back here. Now, once we get to this very last section, we'll do the same one big highlight to maybe half of that in the ends. I'm also leaving this whole middle area untouched. That's your other part of your low light, your veil. After this section, I'm going to remix a little bit more. I'm running low. I have tons of clients with super dark hair, and um, I'm often remixing, and they're like, oh, I have a lot of hair, right? And they do. Don't get me wrong. But it's also nice to remix throughout your process. You're not using the same thing of bleach throughout your whole client because things do oxidate and if we're not paying attention to that you're going to have an uneven amount of lift from one side to the other big huge saturation all the way to the ends and i'm going to go to about right here on the other side this is a little highlight This is on the top. This is no longer under painting. This is all top of the hair, top of the section. But remember, because we have that big veil, we are not going to um, have these big lines of color in the hair. That's going to help kind of blend that out even more, giving it a little bit of a safety blanket for when we're balayaging again for the first time since it's been such a long time. So here's our check mark. You see higher, lower. All on the other end, there's nothing. I'm gonna make sure we have this blend. If you do not do this other step and blend on the other side of your saturated ends, you will have lines. It's all about being blendy, still creating depth in the hair, highlights in the hair. Okay. Should be able to just lay that down right there. For these last three sections, I'm going to mix up just a little bit more. Still with our 40 volume. One to two. And then we're going to let her sit for 60 minutes. Oops. That's the wrong one, Katie. That would have been fun. 40 volume. We have our other brush. We're going to slowly mix it together. Trying to not add any extra air into it. But until it's fully blended, right? Our frame our, frame our brush again. All right, last subsection. This is going to be mostly just our ends. Still doing a little bit of a highlight in there. Oops, just kidding. And then we're going to move to our front section. Those two, the little fringe plus the, the other veil. Highlight point. I only do probably about two inches up off the ends. There we go. These again are going to be those ribbons that are going through the hair. I'm going to catch the light. For me, the foliage is all about leaving the hair in its kind of natural state, right? Its own warmth. 
So we'll use those demi long life demi toners just to cancel it out enough, but also to add that shine back in the hair, the nice glossy finish, and make sure that it doesn't get warmer as after they leave, you know? Looking for that nice little caramel. There's the back end of our check mark. Like I said, once the sectioning was done, it was just more about getting the color on there. Checking this underneath part. And just like that, we're going to drop everything. No, I'm just kidding. Just like that, we're going to lay it down right over the hair. It's not going to transfer. Brandon, now we don't want your client to get up and go to the bathroom or do a whole bunch of storytelling, you know. Try to have them sit still as much as you can, which we know it's kind of hard. But if you see closely, we have our three ribbons. One, two, three. That's going to give it a nice little bright in the front, but no hard lines in the back. All right. Time to go to our veil. Here is our front little fringe. Excuse me, ma'am. Talk about not moving around a whole bunch. And then you move around a whole bunch. There we go. So here's a little fringe area. Granted, right? especially if you're going to do a balayage and they're going to cut their bangs. Maybe cut their bangs before you balayage because if you do that and then chop it all off, the hair is going to look really weird. If you're going to balayage to here, and her bangs are going to start here. You're going to chop all this off. Obviously, there's no point to waste product. But if they do this in the last minute, they end up wanting to add some front fringe. You're going to have a little bit of highlights with weird, chunky lines here. So make sure that she does not want to cut off any of that fringe. And if she does, we're going to go as far down to the base as we possibly can. This so is the big subsection again. We're going to do underpainting all throughout this section. And then while I lay down, I am going to put a foil there and it's going to hang in her face, which is not super fun, but it's only going to be for a second until I finish this section and then we'll throw it all back so it's not in her face at all. Because client comfort is important, right? Pulling the hair straight up from the head. I'm just going to do tons and tons of under painting. This is where we're still going to get that bright front area. Kind of like that color blocking that we've loved for so long. But it's just going to be softer, more lived in. Less on purpose and more that, oh, look, the... The sun, I think, did that to her instead. So, you want to blend this as much as you can. Nobody wants to have a harsh line right in the front of their head. I'm going all the way to the scalp. Even getting a little bit on her face. So, we'll get that off right now. But you see that I'm not really leaving any brown at the base in the very, very, very front. This will be super nice for the girls that have dark hair, but they still have a little bit more grays in that front temple section. This is where we're going to really pack that color in, the mid shaft. And I'm going to flip it over and do just a big deep V on the top part of it. So we still have that top highlight. Sorry, girl, it's going to hang in her face. I'm going to do two big V highlights. But I am going to leave all of that else dark. I 
I am at a salon suite, so if you hear anybody in the background, I do apologize. But as you know, you're probably watching this from your salon suite, so you understand how it is. Salon suite life. Okay. All the way down. And then I'm going to do these ends, tip them out. Okay. Put the back over and do this whole saturated piece. And again, for like two seconds, it's going to hang in our face. If this is a real client, I would absolutely put a foil to protect her face, a mesh or something, because nobody wants to have the 40 volume next to their eyes like that. It does not feel good. I don't care how. Actually, honestly, any volume of bleach next to the eyes just doesn't feel nice. So be thinking about your client as you're balayaging their hair. I'm going to drape that down real quick. Wipe our hands off. I'm going to do this last little third section. And then she's going to process for an hour. So here's that top part of our fringe veil. It's a high point of the triangle. This is this part of the triangle. We just did this section. Now we're doing this section. She's a little tangly, but it is important to have the hair nice and brushed out before you do a balayage, because if there's a little tangle on the hair, it could throw off your pattern a little bit. Okay, now we're going to match those highlights on this side. One here, one here, all the way to the ends, and we're just going to tip those ends out just a little bit, and that's the end of this balayage application, so here we go. And we're going to flip it all back out of her face so she can hang out for the next hour and still, I don't know, look at her phone and whatnot. So, There's two deep V highlights. People want to see her and go, oh, did the sun do that? Or did you just get back from her? Beach vacation? Yes. Yes, she did. So there's our two high points. Going to flip around the other side. Make sure they connect evenly on the other side. And tip both of those ends out. We're too tall. We're off camera. Sorry about that. That's the hardest part about doing online camera work is that when you have one stationary camera, that's all you can you can work with. Okay. This top section, we really truly do not want to have any harsh lines. There would be no point to leave it as a veil if there was harsh lines. So. I'm going to take my comb, just kind of comb it downwards. Oh, that was not good. Let me resaturate these ends. wipe my hands off and then I'm going to flip it all out of her face. Just get a little foil. Again, the foil is only about making sure that the client is comfortable. You do not need this for the actual processing part. Oops, it looks like I got a little right there. It's coming out. Flip this guy back. Oh, it's a 
since I touched it, I'm just going to make sure I fully saturated now that I can see better and I'm not upside down. You definitely want this to be fully saturated. Again, you don't want to see any of the brown in between. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's get that bleach off of poor lady's face. Sorry, client. I'll never burn your eyebrows again. Just kidding. Okay, okay. While we set a timer. Hey Siri. Hey, no, she didn't want to set a timer. Well, we'll just set a timer here. We got a lamp. Okay. Our scent. I'm gonna move her out of the way. Oh, now you want. No, no, I don't want one. Never mind. While we're waiting in process, I am going to talk real quick about our Blonde Life reboot. If you haven't heard, um, we recently redid all of our Joyco Blonde Life uh, in more sustainable packaging, better for the environment, but also better for you. Like our cream lightener is now coming in a 10.5 container instead of an 8.5 container. Get a little bit more bang for your buck. We are also redid some of our packaging just to make it look a little bit more upscale, up nicer. But again, with 100% recyclable plastic and paper board that will come um, also inside of the bleach itself. It's coming in just the container. There's no longer a bag, which is really great. Hinkle is really wonderful. Our uh, parent company who wants to make our environment a better place for you and I and more sustainable. So doing that, um, making sure there's less plastic waste. We also, oh, I can't reach it, we're too far. We still have our quick tones, which I used in my last life for Sloan Republic and I love them so much. Just in a cuter little different packaging. Clear comes in its own, or not, that's not clear. That's violet, just kidding. They come in a little bit of different packaging so you can kind of see them easier, right? Here is our old versus new packaging. And lastly, of course, our demi glosses. Our demi glosses are slightly different than our Lumi 10. I'm sorry, not Lumi 10. Excuse me. Our demi glosses are different than our Lumi Shine uh, demi gloss. It's a little bit more pigmented, in my opinion, but these are designed for blondes themselves to help the is make it feel softer, smoother with our Tamanu and Manoli oils. I'm gonna use these two colors in 9SB and 8N. They look very different than our other ones, so you're never gonna mix them up. Don't mix them together. They have slightly different formulas, so we wanna make sure that we're just keeping them all together in the same family using our Blonde Life developer with our Blonde Life. This again is mixed one to one in a five volume. And I'm gonna use our cute bottle, because again, don't send me anything with the brand on it because I love it. So in here, I'm going to mix equal parts of 8N with 9SB. And then once I'm done letting my girl process, I will apply that at the bowl after I shampoo for 20 minutes. And I would say leave it for 20 minutes. It's definitely important. Um, obviously, desired shade, you can see when it gets there. But if you're going to um, want the full length of the toner, it's going to last the longest, so you're going to leave it on for the 20 minutes. So if you need a 9V, but that might be too strong for your Platinum Blonde, go to a 10V. You can add some clear in there, but let it process for the 20 minutes if you're able to and get that nice full shine, hydration, um, and uh, gloss back in there. And again, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my name is Katie Alm, Katie with two E's. And on TikTok is Katie Alm with just one E because, you know, I'm feeling different. Um, and I will post the end results over there. I'm sure Salon Republic will also have them on their page, um, maybe even in the comment section here. So um, thank you very, very, very much for coming today. I hope you enjoyed some freehand balayage. I hope it gets you in the mood to doing what we used to do back in the day when it wasn't just about how blonde you can get the girl, but it mostly about their lifestyle and what's better for their wallet, for their every day for their job and still keeping it light and bright and California like. So thank you again. My name is Katie Alm and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. I appreciate you.